this and then we go find a ride and then maybe we'll go get some lunch soon. Why is he doing so? Because he likes to do it, Because he gets lots of treats when he does the show. I'll be talking to you today. Down on the beach is one of our sea lion trainers, Kelly. And just over there by the jetty is another sea lion trainer, Lucy. So our star of our show, her name is Carla. I want everyone to give, give Carla a big wave. Say hello, Carla. <laughs> so we are here today to tell you all about sea lions. So Carla is a Californian sea lion. You can find these guys anywhere from California down to Mexico. Carla lives here at the bay with her half-sister Ariel and the girls are 13 and they were born one week apart from each other in a zoo in Denmark. They came to stay with us when they were only nine months old so they have been with us for a long time. Another member of our group is a little boy called Hugo. So Hugo is only four years old and he arrived here at Chesterton earlier last year, February, from Black Palsy. So the first thing we want to clear up today is a case of mistaken identity. Almost every day, sea lions get mistaken for another animal. Does anyone know what that is? Everybody shout it out. Yeah. Seals. No idea? So it's seals. So it's really, really embarrassing for these guys to get called seals, isn't it, Carla? <laughs> so seals and sea lions are actually part of the same family. This is the pinniped family, which means fin-footed. If you take a good look at Carla, you'll see she has four flippers, two at the front and two at the back. <laughs> if you find yourself mistaking seals and sea lions, there's a few differences between them that you can look out for. The first difference is the size of their flippers. So I want everyone to hold out their arm in front of them. So this is actually the length of the sea lion's front flipper. So they're really long and really strong and they can do things like climb on top of rocks like Carla's doing now. So everyone give her a big wave and a cheer. So. If you find yourself mistaking seals and sea lions, they can also rotate their back flippers, which means they can stand on all fours a bit like a dog. They can do all sorts of things, like spin around, jump, and walk on the land. Seals, however, can't do any of this because of the size of their front flippers. So I want everyone to hold out just their hand in front of them now. So this is just the size of a seal's front flipper. So they're a lot smaller, and it means that when they walk, they lay flat on the ground like a big fat slug, and that's how they move around. <laughs> Just like Carla's doing now. Not only do seals and sea lions move differently on the land, but they also move differently in the water. When seals swim, they use their back flippers, moving them side to side, a bit like a fish. Sea lions use their front flippers to propel themselves through the water, and they can actually reach speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. So Carla actually loves to show off how far she can go. Who wants to see how fast Carla can go? Yeah. Carla can't hear you guys, you need to be a lot louder. Yeah. Lovely, that's what we want to hear. So everybody give her a clap as she goes. 
Good job, Carla. So the final difference between seals and sea lions is really small, but it is the most visible to all of us here on the land. If you take a good look at the side of Carla's head, you'll be able to see some tiny sticking out ears. So we do say this lovingly, guys, but it does look a bit like Shrek's ears. Seals have an internal ear structure instead, so you only see little holes on the side of their head. So if you're ever out in the sea and you spot a head bobbing up and down in the water, look out for the ears. If they're there, it's a sea lion. If it's not, it's a seal. So after that, does everyone think they can tell these two apart? Yeah? Lovely. So even though, <laughs> even though seals and sea lions have differences, they do have some similarities, and this is in their predators. So luckily, there aren't any predators here at Chessington, but Carla does like to check her pool just in case to make sure. Is there anything there, Carla? No, lovely. <laughs> So does anyone actually know what the predator of a sea lion is? If you don't know, Carla does love to do a bit of an impression of it. When you guys think you know, I want you guys to shout out. <laughs> yeah, I heard it over there, so sharks. So sharks and, pill and great white sharks and killer both are after sea lions in the wild. But sea lions do have a lot of tricks that they use to escape them. Sharks are fish, so sea lions simply come up onto the land to get away from them like Carla did all throughout the morning bits. However, killer whales are a little bit different. These guys can sometimes come up onto the land for short periods of time in a behaviour that we call beaching. The killer whales slide up onto the land and grab any sea lions that are running away. So sea lions have to use a different behaviour to try and get away when they're in the water. This is called porpoising. So porpoising is what Carla is currently doing now. If you take a look, this behaviour causes a lot of splashes and a lot of bubbles in the water. If you can imagine in the wild, a group of 15 to 20 sea lions all together, doing this all at the same time, the predator is going to get really confused and it means that the sea lions have enough time to get away. Finally, if this does not end up working, sea lions can do one last thing. They can actually launch their entire body out of the water and into the air. This is all thanks to their front flippers. Although it looks really impressive and showy, guys, it is really a natural behaviour that they would do to escape predators in the wild. So I want everyone to give Carla a big cheer for that. That was really, really good. So unfortunately, guys, there is another threat to sea lions, just not their predators in the wild and, in, and all the other marine wildlife. This threat comes from humans, so everyone always say boo. Yeah. So we all need to do our part to help adventurers. This issue is plastic pollution. It's a really big issue and it's been predicted by the year 2050 there'll be more plastic in our oceans than fish. Sea lions and a lot of marine animals eat fish and they sometimes end up accidentally eating pieces of plastic. If this happens, the sea lions end up going belly up. So the best thing to do to save our oceans is to pick up our litter and recycle our plastic. All the litter that you see around you eventually does end up in the oceans and recycling is really easy. So Carla's actually going to show you how to do it. She does not like rubbish in her pool. So all you have to do is pick up your plastic and take it to your nearest recycling bin. So everyone give Carla a big clap for recycling. And does everyone think that they also know how to recycle now? Lovely. So what we are actually doing here with Carla is what we call the training session. So the sea lions get trained all throughout the day, not just during our talks. There's a number of reasons that we train our sea lions. The first is to make sure they're staying fit and healthy. During training, we can ask them to do lots of high energy behaviors, and this means that we're getting them moving about and using all their muscles to stay in good shape. Another reason that we train our sea lions is to keep them mentally stimulated. Sea lions are really smart animals, so it's really important to keep their brains working throughout the day. Both the girls, Carla and Ariel, know about 50 different behaviours, whereas Hugo, who's just beginning to learn, has already picked up about 15. The final reason that we train our sea lions is probably the most important. It's so we can carry out something we call husbandry health checks. We do these health checks with them every day, and they're some of the first things that sea lions learn when they're young. We can get up close and personal with these guys, and we can check inside their mouths. We can check their eyes, and we can give them eye drops if it's needed. We can ask for different body parts like their flippers and we can get them to turn over so they can check their bodies as well. 
This does mean that if any injuries occur, they are noticed right away, and it also means that if the vet ever has to see them, they won't be stressed out or nervous. These checks are done regularly every day, so they are used to it. Both of the girls are also trained to have x-rays and bloods taken voluntarily. So Carla has done a really, really great job today, guys. So I want you guys to give her a big round of applause and to our trainers here at CLA Bay. Thank you everyone for listening to our Sea Line Talk. We hope you have enjoyed learning all about our Sea Lines and watching Carla have a bit of a training session. If anyone has any questions about our Sea Lines or about training, we will be up here at the Red Hut, so please feel free to come up and ask us. Or you can ask Kelly when she is finished with Carla down at the beach. If you guys also wanted to give any feedback, there are KPI machines next to the drink stands towards the back of the bay. Other than that, I hope you guys have a lovely day here at Chessington. Goodbye and thank you everyone.